So, should we kiss now? Yeah, maybe later. I am someone who is a massive superhero fan, but has always been skeptical of superhero video games. So in the lead up to Insomniac Games Spider-Man PS4, it took a long time before I was sold on the game. It wasn't until this year's E3 demo that I saw what all these other Spider-Man fans had been saying for so long. This game looks incredible. I've now completed my time with Spider-Man PS4, having finished the main story, as well as platinumed the game. So now I wanted to review the game, give my thoughts on all its components without spoiling any major story points. So this video will have very minor spoilers, showing footage only from the early portions of the game. So without further ado, let's get right into this review. Spider-Man PS4 delves into the Marvel superheroes world authentically, tells a well-rounded, deep story, and in my opinion will stand as the new benchmark for superhero games moving forward. I had a great time with Spider-Man, from traversing the city web-swinging, beating up criminals in unique and impressive ways, as well as seeing a storyline of Spider-Man's that was not only thrilling, but authentic to the universe and time. The story tells of an older Peter Parker, who has been Spider-Man for 8 years at this point, struggling with responsibilities of his personal life, work life, and life as Spider-Man. So pretty much the usual for Peter, I guess. The story doesn't stop with Peter, however. I actually think one of the things that makes this game so fantastic is the range of cast who get a chance to have their own story and character development throughout, both for the heroes, the villains, and those kind of somewhere in between. Granted, the story of Spider-Man PS4 certainly isn't revolutionary when comparing it to other comic book movies or shows, however, to see the level of commitment from the development team to really create an authentic comic book story in a game is impressive nonetheless, and I feel deserves some credit. The supporting cast of MJ, Mary Jane Watson, Aunt May, among others I won't mention for spoiler reasons, the cast of characters felt full and made the world more believable. Even having Peter listening to J. Jonah Jameson's podcast that trashes Spider-Man as you traverse throughout the world helped build that authenticity I've been talking about, establishing a history to this world while also not retreading on stories told in past media throughout this game. This is Just a Facts with J. Jonah Jameson, where listeners like you discuss the issues affecting our city with Pulitzer Prize winning two-time! Two-time! Pulitzer Prize winning former publisher of the Daily Bugle. Hey! Blood the book! Yuri Lowenthal's portrayal of Spider-Man and Peter Parker was great. He created a constant balance of humor, wit, and seriousness that both those personas require. Which credit also goes to the writers and directors of the game. In my time playing, I didn't feel like I was having information repeated to me nor did I feel like I was being left in the dark on story points. You were given all the information you need to establish a story, world, and all the characters in it, without being spoon-fed what is kind of coming up in the storyline. I must admit the first two thirds of the storyline is much to what I was anticipating, and I didn't really take step into Truly Remarkable until the final third of the game. That's not to say the story as a whole isn't great, it is, but there is certainly a drastic shift in tension and stakes in the latter part of the game. This game would be nothing, however, if Insomniac Games did not successfully create the full gameplay experience of Spider-Man web-swinging around New York. And they nail it. It's easily the most entertaining part of the game. To traverse this world, the Spider-Man instantly made the experience unique to itself. No other franchise or game can do it. It is uniquely Spider-Man. The combat as well takes similarly from the style of Batman Arkham games, and I think it works great here too. I never at any point of playing really got bored of the combat. It was always a feature of the game I enjoyed and found new and creative ways to play around with, especially as you develop through the game in levels and add new skills and abilities. Even having dozens of suit options and equipment to play around with made traversing, combat and stealth a constant joy. Though I feel there is definitely a lot of work to be done in terms of interior gameplay, there are definitely some significant parts throughout this game where you're in an interior and sneaking through a spidey. It's in these moments where the system control that is clearly built for fast, long distance traversal falls apart a bit for me. To have a bit more finesse and precision with movement in these enclosed spaces is definitely an improvement needed in the sequel installment. Even in the city's traversal, I'd love a bit more control on occasion with precision landings and combat moments, but that isn't at all game altering, nor does it ruin any key moments of the game, it's just something I'd love to see improved on with the sequel. 
The open world of the game is filled with side content, including collectibles, gang hideouts, challenges and side missions. Like many other open world games today, the Spider-Man map is divided into districts with lists of activities and side content to complete. With my video game OCD, I find it completely necessary to complete side tasks along with the game's wider storyline, and in this case with Spider-Man, it's no different. I spent most of my time between missions fighting crimes, collecting backpacks, among other collectibles, taking pictures, and meeting those citizens in need of assistance in side missions. Much of these side objectives are added more and more throughout the progression of the storyline, which was a nice addition as it gave me time to complete a specific collectible or side activity at the time it was given to me, rather than having to do them all at once in the middle of missions or at the end of the game. However, there did come a time where many of the side content became a bit repetitive and certainly none of them were innovative. They are almost certainly fun additions and have story purpose and even add to the mythology of the game itself. But when you have to fight 20 crimes in all 9 districts, that's 180 crimes in total to fight to get the Platinum Trophy, it certainly does take its toll. Though Spider-Man is certainly not the most guilty party as open world games do things like this these days, almost every open world game today is riddled with collectibles, some are far more tedious than others. Spider-Man's is at least mostly interesting and story related. The side missions are great highlights to the game as well. Some are simple ones that you'd expect with similar mission structures to main mission content, while others are extension of events that take place throughout the campaign and that's always a plus for me. Needless to say, Spider-Man PS4 is not a perfect game, but it is no doubt fantastic and lives up to the amazing lineup of exclusives that are on the PlayStation 4 platform. From God of War and Detroit Become Human that have just released this year alone, Spider-Man holds its own and carves its place into this monster catalogue of exclusives. And while Spider-Man is not necessarily some massive innovative open world game, I think it does a lot in terms of innovation as a superhero game. Yes, we have seen success with the Batman Arkham games, but after years it begs the question as to whether or not that franchise in particular is an anomaly in the genre. Spider-Man proves it isn't. It can't be understated in my view how much Spider-Man PS4 can and likely will be a key pillar into building a phenomenal Marvel Universe in the video game realm. Maybe not to the level of the MCU, but to know that Marvel have the capabilities to also make fantastic video games as well as movies and shows is an exciting prospect to me. I am very interested at the idea of a sequel to this Spider-Man game and hope to see how companies and license holders take a good crack at making their own superhero video games now that they have yet another high benchmark to reach for. So guys, that is it for my review of Spider-Man PS4. Have you played it? What did you think of it? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll be back very soon with some Odyssey content as well as some other surprise videos. Thanks again guys for watching and I will see you next time.